A ripped back can look even better than perfect six pack abs and having a strong back also improves your posture, it prevents lower back injuries and enhances overall athletic performance. The best part is that unlike your abs and your calves, everyone can get a ripped, attractive looking back regardless of good or bad genetics. So in today's video, I wanna show you how you can quickly develop and shred up your back muscles so that your lats, your rhomboids, and traps can pop out every time you take your shirt off. And the first thing that you have to do is add thickness and size to your upper, middle, and lower back. The best way to do this is by lifting heavy weights for your major back exercises. Now, a lot of people spend tons of time performing exercises like low rows, reverse flies, and skydivers. And even though these are all great exercises, nothing will add thickness to your back better than heavy deadlifts. Specifically, I'm talking about Romanian deadlifts, where you'll use your hamstrings and back muscles more than a regular deadlift. And again, it's critical that once you get the correct form down, you go really heavy. You shouldn't be able to do more than eight to 10 reps. If you are, then make sure you up the weight. The weight load should also be heavy enough that it requires you to use straps because those large muscles in your back should be significantly stronger than what your grip allows you to handle. You can also wear a belt after you do your warm up sets to support your lower back with that heavy weight, but make sure you get some good sets in without the back brace before getting to your heaviest sets. This way you'll still get all the benefits in terms of strengthening your core as well. Now, if you're worried about back pain, you're probably doing the deadlifts incorrectly. You shouldn't be lifting with your lower back. Instead, it's a hip hinging movement where you pull your hips back to lower the weight and push your hips forward via a hinging motion to lift the weight back up. You only have to lower the bar halfway down your shins before lifting the weight back up. So deadlifts are one of the best exercises because they allow you to isometrically load your back with a heavier weight than you can do for barbell rows, pull-ups, or really any other back exercise. However, after completing three to four heavy sets for deadlifts, you should also add in these other great exercises. An exercise like pull-ups is extremely beneficial for your lats, which will give your back a wider appearance. As soon as you possibly can, try to perform pull-ups without any assistance from resistance bands or the assisted pull-up machine. Both methods offer a great way to start doing pull-ups, but as soon as you can, you wanna start performing unassisted bodyweight pull-ups and then bump yourself up to weighted pull-ups with a focus on upping the weight over time. Bent over barbell rows are another great exercise that you can and should go really heavy with. If you wanna work more on your upper back, bend to 90 degrees and pull the barbell in towards your chest. Meanwhile, to work more of your mid back, only bend to 60 degrees and pull the barbell in towards your belly button. Both are great variations that you should be incorporating into your workouts. Another great exercise to develop unilateral back strength and to build up your back stabilizer muscles is the one-arm dumbbell row. Again, you can perform this exercise pulling to the belly button for overall back development, or you can pull to your chest with your elbow out to your side for more upper back development. One last excellent key exercise for your back is the lat pull down. And obviously, as the name implies, it's gonna help you develop your lats. Make sure when you do these, you just pull the bar down to your upper chest. Don't make the common mistake of using your rotator cuffs to pull further than that. So deadlifts, pull-ups, barbell rows, dumbbell rows, and lat pull down should be your main go-to exercises for building up your back muscles in the shortest amount of time possible. And again, the deadlift is probably the most important one because it allows you to lift the heaviest load out of all the exercises. It's also the best at strengthening your erector spinae, developing the appearance of your lower back musculature and separating the left and right sides of your back. Now, aside from doing these exercises, if you want a ripped back, you need to lower your body fat percentage. Without a low enough body fat percentage, those big bulky back muscles just aren't gonna show, especially if they're covered by a thick layer of fat. As with other areas throughout your body, like your stomach, your love handles, and your thighs, you can't spot reduce the fat from your back. So even though you can do tons of cardio, it's much more efficient and you get a lot more leverage by just zeroing in on your diet. So you will need to be in a calorie deficit to reduce the body fat that covers your back. Even though you can lift heavier weights, get stronger, and build more back muscle while simultaneously being in a calorie deficit, it's much harder to lift heavier and heavier weights while in that deficit. So I recommend you do this in two phases. In the first phase, you just eat regularly or maybe even more than regular by taking on a calorie surplus. By eating at maintenance or in a surplus, you'll provide your body the raw fuel it needs to quickly build muscle and increase strength. Once you've built that muscle up, you can then cut calories for a period of four to six weeks. And during that cut, you no longer wanna focus on increasing the amount you lift 
for your back exercises, but instead shift your focus to just maintaining your strength. So do your best to lift the same weights you were lifting before starting to cut calories. Of course, if you can boost strength in the middle of a cut, that's an added plus, but as you become more advanced, that's gonna become nearly impossible to do. There are many ways you can reduce your body fat, but in this video, I'd like to highlight my favorite way, which is by fasting. You can eat two meals a day and know you don't have to worry about accelerated muscle loss or anything like that. In fact, I personally prefer to eat only once a day at night a few hours before bed. But for most people, it's difficult to go the whole day without eating. So I recommend trying a basic intermittent fasting approach where you simply skip breakfast and then eat lunch and dinner. That should leave you about a 16 hour or longer fasting period every day and an eating window that's eight hours or less. Your main priority during your two meals of the day is to take in enough protein. You should be getting at least 0.73 grams of protein per pound of body weight daily, and that should be roughly distributed between your two meals. Now, just because you're only eating two meals a day doesn't automatically mean that you can't go overboard and end up in a calorie surplus rather than a deficit. So for that reason, I recommend tracking your calories for the first week or two to get a good idea of how much of an impact your meals are having on your daily totals. If you eat the same thing every day, it probably won't even take you a week. And if you eat different things every day, you may have to track for a little longer to be sure. You can use an app like MyFitnessPal or the Carbon app to plug in your stats, and then you'll automatically be told how many calories, protein, carbs, and fats to eat to burn fat every day. To make the fat burning process simple and to avoid hunger, you'll wanna fill your diet with whole, natural, single ingredient foods that come from something that has either grown out of the ground or walked or swam along the ground. Even though, yes, you can burn fat eating Pop-Tarts and fruit roll-ups, not only is this kind of dirty eating plan extremely unhealthy, but it's also much easier to get really hungry, binge, and ruin your entire diet plan. Feel free to include tasty sources of protein like salmon, chicken, ground turkey, ground beef, steak, bison, and eggs. If you're a vegan, tempeh, tofu, and especially seitan make for great high protein options. Then for your remaining calories, you can equally divide them between fat and carbs, or you can skew to one direction over the other if that aligns with the foods you like to eat. For example, if you prefer natural sweet tasting foods like fruit over fatty foods like string cheese or avocados, then you can skew more in the direction of berries, apples, watermelon, and other low calorie fruits. You can also feel free to eat filling high fiber carbohydrates like brown rice, oats, and sweet potatoes. Just make sure your daily totals all balance out and create a calorie deficit. The really nice thing is that unlike your belly area, which tends to be the last spot to go, your back will lose fat much faster. Maybe not as fast as your face and your hands, but faster than the areas closest to your center of mass, like your stomach and love handles. So you should see some impressive results even after just four to six weeks of cutting. And that's essentially the formula for getting a ripped back that you can show off every summer. If your back is still not looking the way you want it to look after you finish your month to month and a half long cut, you can repeat the entire process again. So I would recommend bringing your calories back up to maintenance levels and then focusing on gaining more strength for your major back lifts over a period of four to six weeks once again. Then go back and perform another four to six week long cut if you still need to cut more body fat. You probably won't need to cut your body fat as low as you would to see abs, but a good target is to get under 18 to 19% body fat to see some nice back definition. Also, as the weeks go by, feel free to switch in exercises like low rows, as well as selectorizer back machines like the selectorizer pull down and row. Just keep in mind the best exercises are the ones that require minimal equipment like deadlifts, barbell and dumbbell rows, pull ups and pull downs. You can repeat the cycle of building your back muscles and then stripping away the fat over and over again until you have your ideal ripped back. And in the process, your other muscles are probably gonna look great too. If you'd like more detailed demonstration videos on exactly which exercises are best for your back development and how to perform these exercises with perfect form step by step, I'll link up a best back exercise video in the description below. I really hope this video has helped you guys out. It was designed to be a no BS, straight to the point, step-by-step -step guide to get a shredded back. If it's helped you, make sure you subscribe to my channel. Also, if you wanna skip all the typical trial and error and maximize the results you get from the time you spend breaking down your back at the gym, try my free six week shred. This is a done for you program that'll help you pack on muscle on your back as well as other muscles like your chest, legs, and shoulders as fast as possible. It also comes with a personalized meal plan based on your goals, a recipe book, and there'll always be a coach there to help guide you through the whole process. To learn more, you can either click the link below in the description or you can visit my website directly at gravitytransformation.com. 
I'll see you guys soon. Pump it.